Hi there, I am Black Bright. Just a quick video um, for those of you who are returning for the first time. Oh, returning for the first time? What do you call that? An oxymoron. Well, what I mean is, if it's the first time you're passing through, welcome to my channel. And if you, for my existing subscribers, thank you for supporting. Um, I broadcast out the UK. I talk about new stuff and... Um, immigration stuff, anything I think might be interesting. And today I wanted to talk about the immunity passport. So they're not here in the UK yet. I believe they're coming out in the United States. I'm not quite sure whether or not they are actually coming out because there's still a little bit of, um, let me say, controversy about them. And I was thinking, I wonder if I would like an immunity passport. An immunity passport is what they would give you. It's like a back to work pass. So it's what they would give you if they found out you had had the coronavirus and you'd survived it and therefore had antibodies in your blood that told them that you had been infected and therefore were safe to go back to work because you couldn't pass it on to anyone else. Um, with this antibody testing, they have different types. They can either look for the ones that with antibodies that tell them that you've had it, specific to um, COVID-19 or SARS-2, or they can look for proteins in your blood via a blood test. As usual, they're always saying it's unreliable, so there's always a fallback. There's nothing ever just so. Why can't they say this is so? No, they can't say this is this is how it is. This is definitive. They can't say that. They always have to have a full plan, a full back plan. So that if things go tits up, they can say, oh well, we did say it was unreliable. Anyway, I was thinking. If I, if I had an immunity passport, how many others would there be? Would my family be included? Would colleagues be, be included? Suppose that I was the only one who had an immunity passport um, for miles around. Suppose that we're a minority. Suppose that those who have an immunity passport are about 5 or 10%. Five or ten percent of us can go back to work and live a normal life as lonely as hell. Because what would happen is if you had an immunity passport, you would then have to be separated from those who. But you wouldn't have to be separated from those who had it because you couldn't catch it. But the. Hmm, yeah, I was thinking that. If you had an immunity passport, yeah, you can go back to work and you're OK so that people who have it, you can't catch it from them. So I thought you'd be isolated from them, but not necessarily. It just means you can walk around and not worry about getting it again for now. Um, it's like the flu. Um, you can be cleared of one strain and you can get another strain later on a stronger strain it doesn't mean that because you survive this strain you're going to survive the second strain so that's why they're talking about oh they're not sure about it but technically the principle is it's a way of getting the economy back on its feet and the country back on its feet if we have a group of people who are immune and who carry this um, passport they'd be very privileged people they could go back to work they could travel and they wouldn't be of any concern to anyone. It just means you could go to different countries, you could travel if you want, and that kind of stuff. Would you like an immunity? Would, how would you feel about that, having an immunity passport? You know, it'd be like a certificate that you carry around with you to say, yeah, you're okay. How would you feel about that? How would you feel as if you had an immunity passport, but your spouse didn't have an immunity passport? Or your children couldn't get an immunity passport and only you had one. It would mean that you'd have to go travelling alone. You'd have to carry the brunt by yourself. So it's got its advantages and its disadvantages. If the whole family get an immunity passport, then that's fine. I'm wondering if immunity passports come with a cost. How many can they afford to give out? 
Um, is it labour intensive? Is it going to be electronic? How are they going to um, facilitate it? Is somebody going to, is everybody going to give, be given a number or a little piece of paper to say that you are immune? How does it work? They were talking about um, vaccination certificates, but that was to prove you've been vaccinated against it. But if you don't have it, or if you've recovered from it, you wouldn't need the vaccination, would you? So would it mean that those who are immune and have an immunity um, passport wouldn't need the vaccination, but anybody who, do who doesn't have an immunity pass passport will need the vaccination? This is very interesting times, very curious times, and your comments would be appreciated. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.